Hey, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. And you're watching In Depth on Now You Know. All right, so this week, uh, the In Depth that we're doing is on the Tesla shareholder meeting. Um, always interesting because most of the meeting, Elon gets up there and just talks about Tesla and answers questions. So we've got a lot to get through. The fun part for me is that he sort of walks out and everyone's clapping. Mm -hmm. You know, they're all happy to see him. And he's just like, you know, well, guys, this is this is like a party. Yeah. Every, you know, and, and I talk to other people, other companies, other CEOs and like, they're like, you look forward share, to yeah, your their shareholder, shareholder meetings are not <laughs> parties. They're not a party. He said that uh, there are even better years to come. He let little things slip during this. Uh, so we tried to catch as many of them as possible. Mm -hmm. um, he said that Tesla is a fully sustainable energy company. We know that. It's fully contained energy solutions that can scale for the world. We knew that too. We knew that. Too. He let it slip that there's going to be four roof styles that we already know about, but he let it slip that there's going to be even more announced in the future. So I kind of thought for this was it, but there's going to be more. He talked about how the fact that there's going to be earthquakes and hurricanes and snowstorms and floods all over the earth and that Powerwall 2, you can think of it as an uninterruptible power supply. Right. And why is that important? It's important because as the climate changes and, and as just sort of normal climate conditions in different areas of the world, whether it's, you know, I mean, earthquakes aren't really climate, but they are, they will affect people's lives. Um, and to be able to have solar panels on your house that charge this uninterruptible power supply means that you'll be less affected when an ice storm happens or a hurricane hits. Yeah, I mean, he talks about it as an insurance policy for your house. And, you know, we always think of Powerwall 2 as this amazing grid thing that you hook up to solar, but you don't have to. You could just have it as a backup power supply, like a generator for your house. Right. And in some states, and depending on your power, um, you know, company's peak hour schedule sort of thing runs, it can be sort of a money saver. You can be um, running your house on cheaper electricity than you would on peak hours. Right. So he talked about that solar and batteries is this scalable thing. It works for a house. He talked about some islands that it works for. Mm -hmm. um, he talked about uh, American Samoa. He talked about some islands in Hawaii. And then he said, you know, continents are just big islands which I love because I was always super adamant as a child in social studies class. I was like, but aren't continents just big islands? And oh no, it's a continent. I'm like, that's an island. So it's, it's nice to hear my, my eight year old. Elon has proved you yeah, right. He's proved huh? me right. So. <laughs> Elon talked about how they've barely touched the surface on the retail side. He said that right now, you know, obviously there's retail stores. He wants to reach uh, one store for every 500,000 people is what they want. So their plan is to keep expanding till they get to that number. He talks about uh, service being even better. So that there's fast lanes and service centers and they're adding more service stations. So fast lanes are these um, kind of quick in and out bays that where if you just need something quick like tires rotated or you know check a fluid level mm -hmm. um, where you can bring your Tesla in and just get quick things serviced that aren't going to take too long so you kind of service while you wait. Interesting. So they're going to be doubling the number of superchargers this year. That's 10,000 plus superchargers by the end of 2017. Wow. And he mentioned that it's the only high-speed charging network in the world. Now, a lot of us think of, you know, that there's like ChargePoint and there's, what, you know, all the, go. right? But they're not high-speed and they're not all over the world. They're in just small geographical locations. Um, the Tesla charging network, we, we, we kind of forget. It's the, it's the fastest it's, charging network on Earth. And I mean, and it's the only one, right? And I kept, I kept hearing about all these stories about how there's going to be these like 400 plus volt, you know, DC fast charging stations, but like, there's not one anywhere near me. Right. I think there might be like one in Germany or something, but like, there's nowhere near it's me. It's not a network. Right. It's just awesome. The supercharger network is so awesome. And sometimes I take it for granted. And then other times I'm like, oh my gosh, I can go here. <laughs> like, it's amazing. Uh, Elon mentioned that they're going to start adding amenities to the really big supercharger stations. He didn't say what those were, but be cool to see what kind of amenities they're talking about. Because there's already usually, you know, Starbucks and places like that. But he talked about adding amenities. Are these going to be Tesla amenities? I feel like they could almost be like a little Tesla showroom. Or is he talking about um, amenities like we heard at San Mateo where they have um, a valet who parks your car for you? So we heard about this. If you live in, in the, the San Francisco area, you might have already experienced this. At the San Mateo station, it's so crowded. Um, there's usually a line of Teslas waiting to be charged. They have a valet who takes your car, parks it for you, charges it for you. You go in and get your groceries. You come back out. Your car's they ready. Get it for you. That's nice. So maybe that's the amenities he's talking about. Yeah, I mean, I think it's going to be like bathrooms and somewhere to eat. Um, 
I think it'll be really nice. I'd love to see like a, a Tesla restaurant. Ooh. Get a Tesla burger. <laughs> so the autopilot has been uh, sort of a tough slog um, transitioning from uh, sort of the prepackaged mobile eye to um, Tesla's own Tesla Vision. They said that they're finally there. So they finally got up to parity with that mm -hmm. um, and that they're going to be moving forward. Basically, it's going to be going a lot quicker now that they've gotten sort of the hard stuff out of the way. Right. And so next week, um, there'll be a release of the new software update. Um, that's coming out right now as we speak and all the cars coming off the factory floor. But next week, they're going to unroll it to everyone over the air. And according to Elon, this is going to be putting you on on parity with, with Autopilot 1. Right. And they're actually thinking that they're going to be going above right. Autopilot 1 cars finally. There's going to be a trip from LA to New York um, with no one touching the steering wheel or by the, the pedals. Of, by the end of the year. By so he's mentioned year. this multiple times. I just wanted to repeat it because it's not something they're shying away from. He's right. still mentioning it, which means they must be on track. We've heard this before from Elon, but mm -hmm. he's reiterating here that the Gigafactory is going to have the capacity of all other lithium-ion factories in the world combined within just a few years. I know, isn't that incredible? And the, the economies of scale, he mentioned that they'll have the lowest kilowatt hour price in the world, and they'll also have the most advanced batteries. And no one else is attempt, attempting this on this scale. Right. Now, eventually, they want to have more Gigafactories. Right. He said uh, they want to eventually have 10 to 20 Gigafactories around the world. Wow. Um, he said he wants to keep their powder dry in terms of where they're going to be putting the, the new uh, gig factories, um, but it, it does sound like there's going to be some in Europe um, and maybe one in Asia. So he talked about factory safety at the Fremont factory. He said that right now they're 32% below the auto industry injury rate and they're on track to be less than half the auto industry rate. Uh, Elon talked about the semi-truck reveal, which is gonna happen at the end of September in 2017. That's only a few months away. Yep. Um, they are going to show a working prototype at that reveal. Wow. So he said that that is definitely something you don't want to miss. Right. So I hope that we can get to go to that. They're already working with a bunch of potential buyers. Um, and so these potential buyers are already telling them that they want it. Yep. And they're helping to design it. They're helping to tell Tesla what they need in the truck. Wow. So this is really cool. And like I said, he told us he really recommends coming to the semi unveiling. So they just released a teaser image of the Model Y. It's real teaser because there's a, not much there's, here. Right. It's just sort of kind of a shape. He said that they had made a big mistake when they derived the Model X from the Model S, building it on the same platform. And they learned from that mistake. They said that the Model Y will not be built on the Model 3 platform. That when you design a new car, you should design it from the ground up. So that's interesting. But he also said that they're going to be able to drop the capital expenditure for the Model Y by a factor of two from the price of the Model 3. So they're gonna actually be able to make a bigger uh, profit margin on the Model Y because they're learning how to make cars. So what is capital expenditure? Capital expenditure is all the money you spend on factories and robots and on everything it takes to build the car mm -hmm. um, and get it out the door. So because they're learning how to do it more efficiently, I guess that that's why he's so confident they'll be able to save so much money building the Model Y. That's cool. So he also mentioned that the Model Y is going to hit the road in 2019. That's so exciting. Which is... Uh, two years from now. <laughs> wow. He said that the demand will exceed the Model 3. That's hard to imagine. That's hard to believe, honestly. I mean, but, that's... I mean, Americans do love their SUVs, and this is going to be a compact SUV. That's true. So. It's a very popular style of car. Now, the Model 3 configurator is going to come out at the end of July, he said, and they're on track to deliver the first Model 3 in July. So... Again, there's been no speed bumps. It looks like they're ready to go. That's awesome. Now, the Model 3 configurator, it sounds like the, the first version of it is not going to be sort of the Model X configurator where you're going to be changing your seats and your all sorts right. of different there's stuff. Right, there's very few choices. Basically, the things you're going to have at your disposal are color and wheel size. Right. Sounds like that's basically all you get to choose for the first version right of the release so until version two right yeah he said they were foolish to have made so many choices for the model x uh, if you remember back on the model s he said we only had one configuration because that's all they could do right and that worked fine he said the model x was like a faberge egg it was way too many cool things they were overconfident when they built it and he said it's great but it will never be made again he said it'll probably never be made again you hear that sparky you're one of a kind yeah and he said it's an amazing car and it just keeps getting better and better so the single motor version of the model 3 is going to basically be the starter car 
Um, and then early next year is when the, the two motor, the dual motor drive is going to be ready. So we got some questions from uh, people who tweeted in. One question was, how many factories are in the works? And he said, three for now. Locations and timing are still going to be secret. If you haven't put down a deposit, Elon says it's going to be basically the end of next year before you get it. Now he said, if you put down your deposit now, that's when you're going to be getting a Model 3. He said that if you wait longer, it could be longer. So if you right. don't wait, if you want a Model 3, uh, just put down your deposit and then... Yeah, it's only $1,000. It's refundable. So if you don't like the car once you get to drive in it, then you get your money back. Right. So, I mean, but like do it soon if you want to drive it, you know, in the foreseeable future, it right. sounds like. I love his offhand remarks. He said, it's crazy hard to make cars. There's like 10,000 items and it moves as fast as the slowest item. So is this in talking about supply chain? Right. And, and he's saying that, that basically for the Model Y, they're simplifying the supply chain even more. They're wow. learning so much about supply chains. They're bringing things in-house when they can do them better and quicker mm -hmm. themselves. And they're simplifying the supply chain in terms of what they need for the car. And we're already seeing that on the Model 3. I mean, w when we see the charge port, it looks like there's just one thing to plug into. It doesn't look like it's an automatic door or anything like that. Like, they're simplifying. So someone asked if battery upgrades will be available for older models. And Elon said, yes. We can offer that for every car and we'll offer that more every year. So I think what that means is they probably don't have the ability to do it yet, but they're going to ramp that up as cars get older. So if your battery's getting older, but the car itself is fine, it sounds like you'll be able to switch out the battery and probably be able to get newer, more advanced battery technology. Yeah, that could be exciting. I mean, you could be taking a, you know, longer a 60, trip. you know, Model S 60 um, putting in battery pack and putting in like a hundred or yep. in the yep. future, like, you know, 150 or some right. crazy get your range thing. up. Yeah. To like, you know, 500 miles or whatever you could possibly get up to. So Elon said that they're going to be offering more used model S's on their website and he called them used. He said they're no longer going to use the term pre-owned because he said everyone knows that that's a joke. Elon talked about how they really want to address worker safety in their factories. Um, so every week, um, he's working with the safety team. They're trying to get half the injury rate of any company. And they're getting close to that. They're getting fairly close to that. Um, so they've changed it to three shifts at the factory instead of two, which helps because basically when you get tired, you tend to make mistakes and mistakes lead to injuries. They're redesigning the processes and tooling to avoid repetitive stress and injuries. Um, and basically they're making huge progress. For the Tesla semi truck, he mentioned that they're gonna hit scale production in two years, maybe even 18 months. Wow. That would be incredible if, if that were true, because yeah. that would mean that they'd be rolling out at full steam in just two years. Yeah. And he said that they're going to be improving the speed of supercharging, which is exciting because, I mean, it's already pretty blisteringly fast. I, I'm wondering if this is going to be for newer cars, or I, I think you can maybe squeeze a few more kilowatts into an existing car, but I don't think there's too much more room to do. What I love is it shows that they're not just sitting on their laurels. They, they're keep pushing the envelope that's true i mean they're they're not just saying like yep we're just going to keep making these car models for right. the next hundred years right they're i mean they're constantly constantly improving it's amazing someone asked about the story um the AAA of southern california is charging higher insurance rates on teslas and he said there's a simple solution change your insurance provider he said that uh, teslas generally get five percent lower uh, rates than other cars and some markets they even get 20 to 30 percent lower rates because they are safer cars we're going to be covering the story more in the future so keep your eye on it here talking more about safety there's a thing called combined crumple zones basically if you crash into another car mm -hmm. your crumple zone and their crumple zone are what slows down both cars okay. because i mean you can't just slow down your car you have to slow down both cars that's how newtonian physics works okay so if you have a big crumple zone you are not only helping yourself by slowing down your car at a slower acceleration, which means... Oh, you're, you're helping the other car. You're going to be helping the other car because... Every, so you're making other cars on the road safer by driving a Tesla. Right. You should... I mean, like, if you're driving any car, if you had to get into an accident, hitting a Tesla would be the safest possible option because of, of, of the, the design. Zone. And it's not just the, the crumple zone that makes the car safer. Because there's no engine block, I mean, again, crumple zone, but the hood of the car is safer p for pedestrians. So if you hit a pedestrian, um, you may have seen like a, one of those high speed crash test dummies, you know, sort of slumping over onto the, onto the car. Um, you know, they hit the hood and usually the, first of all, the hood is usually made out of steel. And so it's less flexible and, and you're 
whacking your head into that. But because it's aluminum and because there's no engine block underneath, it's uh, Elon said it's like a trampoline. He said it's not a fun trampoline, um, but basically you're not going to be slamming into a block of steel. You're going to be slamming into basically a big, you know, uh, spring. Yeah, aluminum spring, and you're going to be less hurt. So it's not only safer for you driving your Tesla, yeah. it's also safer for other cars on the road if you get into an accident with them, mm -hmm. and it's safer for pedestrians. Wow. So it's just an all-around safe car for everybody. Someone asked about package deals. Can we get solar roof power walls plus cars at a cheaper price? And he mentioned that doing it at the same time would save you about two to $3,000 right now uh, because you're getting it done at the same time. But he said maybe it's something that they could consider doing in the future. He was asked about getting new directors for the board. Um, and he said that they would add at least two, maybe three new directors um, with an announcement in about a month or two. People asked about the audio system, any insight for the Model 3, and uh, Elon mentioned that they could improve the audio codec in the Model S, X, and 3 and program it over the air, um, and he said it's going to get better just by improving that codec. Wow. I mean, No other car company can do that. I know. That's amazing to improve the, the audio quality just with an update. Someone asked if Model 3 will roll out in states without direct sales. Elon said basically you can order a Tesla in any state in the country. You can get it serviced in any state in the country. Basically the only thing they can't do is sales in stores in every state. Um, but I mean you can still live in a state where you can't buy it in a store and still order it online and get it. That's right. Someone asked what does Elon do for relaxing? So Elon mentioned that sports is not a big thing for him, but that music in the car is a big thing. And he had an exciting announcement about the music player in the car. He said that it will be made maybe this year. I'm guessing that announcement could be something like Spotify. I really hope it would be. Yeah. Um, so that could be happening. Uh, he said he loves movies. He loves watching movies with his kids. They just went to see Wonder Woman and they loved it. Uh, he loves to hang out with his kids and see friends. And sometimes he goes crazy on Twitter, especially after having some red wine, something on the vintage record player, and some Ambien. He said, then the magic happens. So that might explain why we get these big tweet storms sometimes. That's yeah, true. So he was asked if they were going to need uh, another plant for the Model Y. And he said yes, that the existing Fremont factory is bursting at the seams. He said that the parking situation alone is causing riots. He said recently they had a contractor who was setting up for the Model 3, bringing in another 500 people a day, and he said that almost caused a riot. They now have um, valets who move cars around just to make it so that it's usable. Right, so the Model Y, um, the batteries and the motors are going to be made at the Gigafactory, um, but that they're going to need another plant to assemble the Model Y. Cool. Very cool. So people were wondering how Elon like arranges his time. Um, and he says basically that tweets don't correlate to how he spends his time. So he said, yeah, the, the tweets don't correlate to how he spends his time. He tweets a lot about like the boring company, but mm -hmm. he said that that's just like a hobby. He said there's like three full-time people, some interns. He said there's no pressure because everyone thinks he's going to fail. And he said those low expectations are great kind of because then he doesn't have to worry about it. It's just like, this is just a fun little hobby. So that takes about 2% of his time. Mm -hmm. He said Neuralink takes about 3 to 5% of his time. Open AI takes about 2% of his time, and then 90% of the time is spent between SpaceX and Tesla, with slightly more going to Tesla, and he said that Tesla is a drama magnet. Yeah, he said he's learned so much from how rockets are made that he can translate a lot of that over to the car side, that when once you know how to make a rocket, I guess a lot of that same kind of uh, factory technology and so forth and engineering can be applied to making cars. That's really interesting. I don't think there's too many other car manufacturers that uh, that also make rockets have on rocket the side. experience. Yeah. <laughs> so we got some questions about solar roof, about like questions about how difficult it's going to be. And basically, he said that because Solar City has been doing what they've been doing for so long, that they've solved a lot of basically what he said was thorny, complicated, unsexy problems. Mm. Um, basically, every state and city municipality has their own rules and and their own little like ways that we do things here um and so they've sort of solved all of those issues and so when they you know go to install solar roofs it's going to basically just be as simple as installing the you know the regular solar panels um and that they already know how to deal with every little case they're not going in blind basically they have a ton of experience right that and he said just... the prices are going to come down as they achieve economies of scale they want to minimize the work on site they want it to be like legos now what did he mean by that so i think this has to do with the connector that they've designed now the connector, the connector on the on, on the tile? On the tile, because basically anyone can make a solar roof tile. 
Um, but then connecting that to a roof system mm -hmm. is going to be a bit more difficult because, I mean, what, you're going to sit up there with, like, a soldering gun? Right. Basically, I think what the Lego comment has to do with is the connector. Um, basically, they said that they have worked really hard on this connector, that it was the hardest part of the entire project. I think it's going to look a little something like a Lego where you're just going to sort of snap on this. It probably holds on a little bit better than a Lego, mm -hmm. but, you know, that it, that will both hold and, and connect. electrically connect your solar panel. So we talked about how they're establishing supercharger locations in cities that'll have a little bit lower power than traditional superchargers, but there'll be more of them in cities, and this is why. Why are they doing this? Basically, people who live in cities generally have, you know, you know, maybe they park on the street all the time. They're not going to have a consistent place where they can charge their car. Um, and it's important that they are able to charge their car. And I think that it's actually kind of smart that they, the superchargers are going to be a little lower powered because these people are going to be supercharging all the time. And as we've learned uh, before, if you supercharge a lot, um, you can start to hurt your battery a little oh. bit. Um, and you're going to need to like lower the, the speed at which you charge. So having a lower power supercharger in the city Would means that, that those people who are charging there all the time, you know, won't run into that problem quite as much. So someone asked, electric planes, are electric planes in Tesla's future? So Elon said that basically right now they're not looking at them. It's not that they are inconceivable, it's just that they are not quite there in terms of energy density. Right now, um, they can get to somewhere around 400 watt hours per kilogram. Um, they're thinking that in five years, they're going to be at about 500 watt hours per kilogram, which and is going that's to... that's what you need for electric planes? He thinks that that would be a lot more... Uh, feasible. Feasible, yeah. And lastly, someone asked if you could put a nuclear fusion reactor into the front of a Model S. Um, he says that, yes, you can. You can fit one, um, but that they aren't going to be doing that. So that's no nuclear powered at Model S's. Uh, no, I think they're going to stick to solar and batteries. It's a pretty, it's a pretty good system. Um, plus, I mean, you'd completely ruin your crumple zone if you had that's a nuclear true. reactor that sitting in the front. That wouldn't be good. And I think it would also throw off the weight of the car. You know, because I mean, then although you could get rid uranium of the battery, is, uranium is very heavy. Get rid of the battery, though. I suppose, but again, that, then you're looking at like a sort of just a regular internal combustion engine car in terms of the weight. Well, thank you so much for watching in depth. You can see in the link below the whole shareholders um, meeting. meeting. So that's fun to watch. And now that you have all the notes for you, please come back and join us for Tesla Time News, which is coming out tomorrow. And we will see you soon. Now you know.